you've made it to week four of uh, supersymmetry and conformal field theory. Congratulations. This week we're going to talk about some more advanced concepts in conformal field theory. We're going to talk about radial quantization in lecture one. In lecture two we're going to talk about the operator product expansion. And, in the, and then in lecture three we'll talk about conformal blocks. These are all leading up to a discussion next week of the conformal bootstrap in which we'll find out how to put additional constraints on four-point functions and indeed higher point functions in, in uh, conformal field theory, which also leads into a discussion of uh, some exciting recent progress in, in this field and in, in how to uh, characterize uh, certain conformal field theories uh, better than has been done before. All right, so let's get started. So this, this, this lecture we're going to talk about radial quantization, which is a new way of thinking about time evolution in, in conformal field theory. So again, I want to offer a new way of thinking about time. So where does this new notion come from? It comes from the dilatation operator. So the origin, the origin of the coordinate system plays a special role in CFT. And why is that? It's because of our choice of generators. We, we choose the dilatation operator to have this special form, minus x mu partial x mu. And this operator will will vanish, right? X vanishes at the origin. And so, so by choosing the origin as a point uh, with respect to generate these scale transformations, we've made the origin a very special uh, point given our choice of generators. I mean, we, we could, of course, we could have chosen another point uh, to generate scale transformations. We could have a different point. They're all the same, right? We have this huge con conformal, uh, conformal symmetry group. Um, we could have defined conformal transformations with respect to some other point that's translated away from the origin. So x mu minus a mu uh, and then plus a mu back. So then if you plug in um, the point a mu, uh, you get back the point a mu. But if you plug in uh, a different point, um, you'll get some uh, scale transformation about, uh, about this new origin. But we don't do that. We choose, we choose this d as our generator. And because of that, the origin plays a special role. Now, what I'd like to show you today is that there's a way of thinking about D as a Hamiltonian, which generates time evolution, except our time now is the radial coordinate. So it's going to generate not quite time evolution, but, but radial evolution, evolution in the radial coordinate. And from this point of view, the origin of our coordinate system becomes the far past. Let's compare this way of thinking with the standard way of thinking about uh, a quantization, a, a, of thinking about time and quantization in, in relativistic conformal field theory. So in standard QFT, we can think about generating, say, in states or out states by inserting some operator either in the far past and acting on the vacuum or in the far future for some, for some operator. It's up to you what you choose. It's up to you what you want for your in-states or out-states, but you can do this. Now to think about a sort of similar setup in, in conformal field theory, where I want the radius as my time coordinate, it's helpful first to do a, a coordinate transformation. So in CFT, we write the line element on flat space, this notion of infinitesimal distance on flat space, we can write it in the following way, basically polar coordinates. So you have a radial coordinate R, and then you have all of your spherical coordinates, as the second term in this line element. So this, this d omega squared, this is the line element on a sphere. So I can think about this as polar coordinates, spherical polar coordinates, where I have my radial coordinate, and then I have all my angular, angular coordinates, uh, which I'm just writing in a shorthand way as d omega squared. Now, to think about this as a time, let's define a new coordinate tau. We're gonna define tau such that our old radial coordinate is e to the tau. And in this way, r equals zero is tau goes to minus infinity and r goes to infinity is the same thing as tau goes to infinity. So large radial distance from the origin is as far in the future in this, this uh, reinterpretation of time and the origin is the far past. So if I do this, let's see what happens to my line element in the new coordinates. So if r is e to the tau, then a little dr is e to the tau d tau. And then I'm going to plug uh, this expression back into my line element on the next page and see what I get for a new line element. I'm going to find that uh, ds squared, I can now write it as e to the 2 tau, d tau squared, 
plus d omega squared, where now this little bit here I can think of as a, as a metric on a cylinder, or a line element on a cylinder. So I have these spheres, these omegas, at each value of tau, and then I have tau which runs from minus infinity to infinity. And then there's this overall vial factor or conformal scaling factor in front, uh, which I won't worry about too much. Okay, so let's go back again to standard QFT. I'm trying to build here off your knowledge of standard QFT in order to take the next step to think about what radial quantization means in, in CFT. So in standard QFT, I have a Hamiltonian, which is the energy, which I can also think about as the time component of the form momentum, which we also wrote as minus i partial tau, or partial t, sorry, in, in one of the first lectures in this, in this module. So in standard QFT, this is the Hamiltonian, and it generates time translations. Now in CFT, I want the dilatation operator to take the same role. So how can I make sense of that? So the dilatation operator, remember, we wrote as minus i x mu uh, d dx mu, which in my spherical coordinate system or polar coordinate system, I can write as minus i r d d r, where r is the radial coordinate. Okay, now by the chain rule, this is minus i r d tau d r d d tau. And remember, what is tau? r is e to the tau, and so tau equals log r. So if I go and take a derivative now with respect to tau, d tau of dr is, is 1 over r. And so what do I find? I find that this is minus i partial tau. And so indeed, with respect to this new coordinate system, I see that d uh, generates evolution in tau. Or, or equivalently in this, in this radial direction. So given that, remember I had my, my notion of a conformal primary state from a few lectures back, which was given by acting on the vacuum with a conformal primary operator at the origin. This was, if you will, a definition. In our new perspective as radial coordinate as time, this is then a standard, let's put it in, in, in scare quotes because it really isn't standard, but I'll say it anyway. It's a standard in state. And we can also put in parentheses, there are also out states that we get by uh, acting with operators at large radial distance. Out states created uh, by acting with phi i of x at large radial distance. Okay, this is a very short lecture. Uh, that's almost all I want to say. There are a couple of caveats I want to add now before, uh, before we put this lecture to rest. A couple of technical issues. Uh, there are technical issues that, that spoil the direct analogy to a certain extent. Issue number one is that this e to the i tau d is not unitary, at least not in a, in a standard sense. Because remember, the eigenvalues of d are pure imaginary. So when I put in a pure imaginary eigenvalue into this exponential, I get something that you know, is going to increase or decrease the norm of my state exponentially. That's not what we typically mean when we say unitary evolution. We mean some kind of evolution that preserves the norm. Another issue which is, is closely related is that it's rather tricky to define an inner product in conformal field theory with this notion of radial quantization. And I have to see that I have not seen a good and simple discussion of these issues. I have seen many discussions, uh, but there are none that I I find particularly to my liking, and so I, I have trouble recommending one uh, to you. We'll come back to these issues uh, next week when we talk about the bootstrap and, and, and some further, uh, this further notion of unitarity bounds or reflection positivity bounds, where I'll have to do a slightly better job in discussing an inner product. Uh, but it, let me just say now that this is a, this is a slightly subtle issue. Uh, that, putting the, the, the bra state with your cat in, in, in conformal field theory. Okay, that's all I want to say about radial quantization. Uh, so join me next time and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll use this notion in trying to develop the notion of an operator product expansion.